Well, good evening, guys. We've reached day seven of the lockdown. Now, I don't know how many of you are aware of it, but uh, seven is a number of rest. And I pray that by now, you guys have really come and uh, position yourself in a position and a place of, of rest. Yesterday, I began to speak to you about fear. And I still see this, especially on some of the Christian uh, channels, there's a lot going around about this G5 and petitions, and I don't know what else. Guys, please, let's focus on the word. These are all conspiracy theories that is running around. And we need to ensure that we root ourselves in the word of God and that, would not be, that we are not being chased around by different winds of doctrine. In this session tonight, I want to focus a little bit still on fear. And I want to share with you just some elements of what we need to apply in our lives if we want to overcome fear. I want to start off with Psalm 34, verse 4. It says here that I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. Now, the key factor here is I sought the Lord. And the second factor is he heard me. And then the result, he delivered me from all my fears. The first requirement is that we need to seek the face of the Lord. In order for him to hurt us or to hear us, we need to speak to him. We need to share with him our hearts and what is on our hearts. You know, so often we don't even speak to those who are closest to us about the fears that we carry on the inside of us. As husbands, we want to be strong for our families. As wives, we want to be strong for our husbands and for our children. So we keep up this facade of I'm strong and I cannot be moved. While deep inside, we are having our own battles and nightmares. And I want to encourage you, especially in this time, to have open communication with one another, share your hearts with one another, but also in the process, seek the face of the Lord. Sit at the feet of the Father as a husband and as a wife, as a family, and pour out your hearts unto the Lord and allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister to your heart and to your spirit. What I want to just very lightly touch on in this meditation tonight is what are some of the ways that we can overcome fear when it comes our way? Now, the first thing that we need is we need to exercise our faith. In Psalm 56, Verse 3 and 4, it says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. You see, for me to overcome fear, I have to activate my faith. I need to trust in the word of God. You see, what is faith? Faith is trusting and believing what God says and then to act on that belief. It's not just a, a mind exercise or an intellectual exercise. It's exercising what you believe in your heart and then live according to that belief. When I walk in faith, I believe with all of my heart that God is my shield. In Genesis 15, 
God spoke to Abram and he said to him in verse 1, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. God says to Abram, I am your shield. And as sons of Abram, we have that same promise. God is saying to you, I am your shield. In Proverbs 30 verse 5, it says, Every word of God is pure, and he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Faith is also trust. I encourage you to trust God in this time. Psalm 33 verse 20 says, Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Guys, not all these things where people are running around today. God is our help and our shield. Having said that, I'm not saying you must deny medical treatment or the common grace that God has given to us. So please don't, you know, take out of context of what I'm saying. The second thing that we believe in faith is that God is with us. Again, in Genesis 26, 24, God says, I am the God of Abraham, your father. Fear not, for I am with you, and I will bless you. God says to you, fear not. I am the God of Abraham, your father. You know, <laughs> we all know Psalm 23, and I think sometimes we forget verse 4. It says, yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And sometimes we forget about these things. Then there's a beautiful scripture in Hebrews 13. And personally, this is a scripture that the Lord has used in my personal journey with him to really take me through very, very, very hard and difficult times together with my wife. And it says in Hebrews 13 verse 5, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, if you read this in the Amplified, it actually basically repeats, I will not, I will not, I will not. So let this be your re reality. <coughs> uh, sorry. That God will never leave you. He will never so forsake you. He is with you. His presence is with you. And then, Faith says, he is my life, he is my salvation, he is my strength. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Faith in God says, he has redeemed me. In Isaiah 43 verse 1, we know this, where he says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. I spoke about this earlier as well, earlier this week. Faith says that God is my helper. In Hebrews 13 verse 6, it says, So that they may boldly say that the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. It's fearlessness because I know that God is my helper. Faith says, I know that God is able to deliver me. Faith says, I know that God is my keeper. Faith says, I know and I understand the agape love of God. I understand that there's no fear in love. That I know and understand that perfect love casts out all fear. You see, you see, if we have no fear, we begin to understand the perfection of God's love towards us. Faith in God says that I resist that which is evil. 
because evil will flee from you. And then faith says that I surrender and I submit myself to God. I want to conclude with this verse in Proverbs, in Proverbs 1 verse 33, where it says, But those who hearken unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. You see, if we turn our hearts to God, there's no room for fear. Do you trust him? I'm asking you, do you really, really trust God? Do you trust him enough to take you through this time of crisis that we are facing at the moment? Are you secure? in the knowledge that he loves you, that he cares about you, that he's given his life for you, and that you can relax and know that his hand is upon your life. I can only encourage you to by faith, take the hand of the Lord, put your faith in him, and trust him to carry you during this time. I can speak of personal experience that he will not leave you and he will not forsake you. He will carry you in these difficult times. But faith in God also says, I'm willing to become vulnerable. I'm willing to set aside my pride and acknowledge and say to the Lord, Lord, I need you. I need you in this time. I fear for myself. I fear for my family. I fear for those that are close to me. You see, it's only as we come to the Lord and it's, we are transparent and we are honest that God can help us to deal with those enemies and he can bring us to a place where we can rule over those enemies. I encourage you and I want to call upon you to ruthlessly deal with every aspect of fear in this time because God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a sound mind. He's given us faith. He's given us joy. And there's no reason for us as believers to operate from a place in a position of fear. Listen to the things that you are saying. Guard your mouth. Ask yourself constantly, what am I propagating? Truth. The word of God or fear? I invite you as a family to meditate upon this and to just spend some time in dialogue and then please pray. And also partake of the table. <coughs> Let's just pray, Father. Thank you that your love towards us is so precious. That you've given Jesus yourself to us so that we can live life. And not only live a life, but can have life in abundance. Lord, in the midst of this crisis, we turn our hearts to you and we say to you, Lord, we believe. And where there's unbelief, we pray that you'll come to help us to overcome that unbelief. Fill us, Lord, with your strength and with your power, with your truth, because we will know the truth and it's the truth that will set us free. 
Lord Jesus, thank you for your table of grace. We come tonight to your table. We partake of the elements. Thank you for your blood that was shed. Thank you for your body that was broken. And Lord, as we come to your table, we come to your table with thankful hearts, with rejoicing hearts, because you've delivered us from all sin and unrighteousness. And you've given us the ability to overcome. You've given us the ability to rule and reign over our enemies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. And thank you for your hand of love and of protection upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray you'll have a glorious evening and that you will continue to experience the grace and the love of God upon your life. I'll see you around and I'll see you again tomorrow night as we gather around the word of God for a time of meditation. God bless you and have an awesome night. Goodbye.